on, on today's webinar, um, Patricia and I are going to be talking through some of the questions about about social media and uh, and analyst relations, which came up in uh, in the AR forum uh, in October, where Patricia presented experiences from 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 her team into um, into the way that Symantec has been successfully able to build relationships using uh, using social media supplementing of course the relationships that they're building with other with other means and the following day at an ar leaders forum where people from uh, from many of the largest ar programs represented at the forum came together and, and picked out social media and analyst relations and use of social media as one of the key topics that we need to uh, that we need to uh, to drill uh, down on so what we're going to be doing in the in the call today are going through a number of questions that have come up in the uh, in the in, in, in the time since then. I've got various sets of questions. If you're a member of the AR Forum group on LinkedIn, you may have seen a post by me with these questions. What we're going to be asking asking Patricia and if um, and if uh, and if um, and if um, and if Barbara is able to join us. Then uh, what we'll be able to do is can go through some of these questions, but not but not all of them. I'm afraid the the browser on the machine that I'm using isn't supporting presentation mode, so I'm afraid you're just going to have to put up with this, uh, with this with this smaller uh, with the smaller screen uh, here. But hey, you know, there's nothing super special there anyway, so we'll we'll all be fine. <laughs> um, Patricia, I I just want to start off with um with this question about about social media and the analyst ecosystem today and uh, and kind of looking at you know how far analysts are or are not using social media today i wonder do, do you have any first thoughts about that i mean obviously we can bounce it backwards and forwards but just wondering what your experience is of maybe how many of the analysts that you're looking at are using ar and how many people are doing that intensively um, I mean, yeah, well, we have experienced some of the analysts that we track, you know, some of them use it more, some of them use it less. Some of them use, some of them use um, various kinds of social channels, and that includes Twitter, LinkedIn, and blogs. Um, some of them don't use it at all, and then um, we want to you kind of jump from the, well, you, you know, another question, you put out personal corporate brands. There are some analysts where I would say, you know, there's no need to follow them because they only share things, things like, you know, had a cup of coffee this morning and, you know, making dinner, things like that. There is this balance that you have to, or that we found we need to be careful about. Um, there are analysts that post, let's say, 20 tweets a day out of these 20 tweets. There are 19 that are very, you know, um, on, a, on a personal level and only really talking about, you know, personal life, coffee things. But there's this, there's this one tweet that may be about your company or that may be about a customer um, of yours, um, which is important. So it is what we found is, is very, you know, kind of, it, it's very important to track some of these analysts and listen to what they say and then figure out, okay, how much of what they say is important to us and how much of it, you know, we just then have to be, you know, very, um, or, or put a lot of um, attention to it. So. Yeah, again, there's, you know, some use it more, some use it less. Um, but listening, you know, looking at what these analysts do, especially the ones you track, um, that is, um, is, is very important, definitely. And then you figure out after a while, you figure out, you know, some of them are more more influential than others. Some of them, the, the, the stuff that they post on their blogs, on their tweets, is more important than the stuff other people post. So you find that easily over time, I think. And, and do you see anything in terms of you know the characteristics of analysts who might be either not using social media or using social media primarily personally or using it primarily as a channel for their brands? I mean, I wonder if there might be some some demographic thing or uh, you know that 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 the, the, you know where you're seeing particular patterns coming in. Um, I mean, what we found out when you know when when talking to analysts about their social media habits and also. What the company is, you know, asking them to do. Um, there are, especially, what well, I, I say, the 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 bigger firms, they're not forced to use social media. There is the, you know, the Gartner block, the Forest the block, IDP Oven block, um, and a lot of these analysts tweet um, and blog as well. 
they don't have to do it, they just do it because um, you know, it helps them with their research. There are some smaller fans to talk to um, and they are asked to use social media. They are asked to communicate with customers, members on social media or, you know, not, not maybe not, um, you know, maybe only listen to what, use this as another research tool um, to help them, you know, with their work, with their research. Um, but that, that, again, that depends as well. You know, I, I'd say some of the bigger firms, they just do it because, um, yeah, it helps them. They, they, they don't have to do it. Um, there is some smaller firms, they just need it as, another, as an additional resource um, for their work, for their research. So it's very convenient for them to use social media. And so, I mean, that's an interesting question, actually, in terms of, you know, the, the size of firms. I mean, it absolutely is the case with smaller organizations that one thing that we often see are organizations using social media, you know, very powerfully. And, and there are a number of really small firms that have really been able to transform their reputation through the use, through the social, through the use of social media. Do you have a sense that maybe there might be some firms at the other end of the scale that are very anxious about their analysts uh, using social media or might want to really control uh, the way that, uh, that, um, that, that people are using social media. I mean, I'm thinking not just of, of Gartner, for example, which you know was very suspicious about blogs and then said the, the Gartner blog network, which you know could not exactly be described as being a straightforward success. Um, or you know, are you seeing are you seeing firms that seem to have different policies on social media? I'm surprised actually by how often firms are not uh, setting clear, consistent guidelines for how analysts um, use social media. Well. I mean, yes, you have you have to be very careful with what you what you share on social media, what you say. Um, obviously, you know, because it can damage your reputation as well. Um, I'm not. I haven't spoken to any of the vendors in terms of, you know, does your company forbid you to do to use social media? Because um, I know that. Um, but I, but I, I think absolutely it, it was very difficult with our company as well. You know, we have um, social media policies in place um, that you know, tell employees this is what you can do, this is what you can't. Um, and you should have, I would assume, you should have these kind of um, guidelines and you know in place so that you have you have these things kind of in control. Um, what people are saying on social media. I have to apologise for all the pings as people join or leave the, the call, but the calls were way over uh, the number of people that we expected, I'm afraid. Well, it was a good thing for us, but just lots of people arriving. Um, I wonder if I could <coughs> smoothly move on to some questions about, about strategy and planning. I mean, I think there are a number of problems that teams uh, the teams have, and, and actually what, one of the complications I, I find is simply getting uh, getting permission you know, to start doing analyst relations. I think that there's a, there's a big um, cultural difference that when I look in North America, it seems to be much easier for AR people to feel confident about starting to reach out using social media, whereas in, in some European countries, people are a little bit more anxious about doing that. I mean, how, how do you see the strategy and planning process? Um, I think for us, I have to say, um, we're kind of at semantic. We're kind of um, lucky as well that we're able. We have a, you know, a big, a large social media corporate social media team um, in semantic. You know, they're based in the US. They have people in the near, people in APJ, and we're quite lucky that we can always um, use these resources and also um, not only in terms of strategy but also the materials they create um, uses for our program. Um, so for us, from the beginning, it was always, you know, very easy for us to jump on the, you know, big wagon from the from the corporate social media team and ask them for help. See, you know, what's their strategy? How can we adapt their strategy, the, the corporate social media strategy, um, to work with them um, with the, with our AR plans and what we were planning, what we are planning to do um, in analyst relations. Um, so yeah, for us, in particular, that that was always always very easy and you know not, not only corporate social media teams working very closely with marketing as well working very closely with PR and other communications teams within the organization um, so it's not we're not running our own um, you know analysis program yes we do run the channels but in terms of strategy in terms of you know resources that we can that we can use it's always um, in a, aligned our plans are always aligned you know we can always we share the resources within the different teams that that's super helpful. I know that other companies, you know, are not that lucky, um, but I think for us, we're very lucky to have that, you know, bigger team 
um, that we can can ask for help basically. And they they also help us, you know, support um, you know our plans, and that also includes tools, you know, social media monitoring tools, for example, that we can we can use because the corporate social media teams have, you know, signed the contract, things like that. So um, yeah, so that's that's very easy for us, I'd say. Obviously, metrics and measurement are something that we'll be picking up on later on, but I think it's interesting to to see about what to, to think about what the impact is of being more tightly aligned into a corporate social media uh, framework. I mean, for example, at Semantic, do, how specific is the is the guidance that you get? I mean, do you get, um, for example, guidance on on tone of voice? Maybe that's too specific a question, but I suppose what I often see is analyst relations programs that are a little bit adrift in in the way that they, they they use social media and it's hard to balance between either simply mechanically pushing out what the firm is pushing out on the one hand to being like super tactical and just asking asking analysts exactly what kind of coffee they picked up at starbucks and getting the balance between that it often seems to be hard um it is hard but um i i'd say for us when i think about what the, what the corporate teams do and what they provide for us is things like um you know infrastructure things like training um so for example we have done um the, the social media the corporate social media team they're going to training for the whole company you know how do you behave on twitter how do you use twitter how do you use what can you do with blogs um you know how do you behave on, on google plus linkedin things like that and what we've done then in the AR team is taken part of these trainings and included them in the, you know, when we train AR spokespeople. Um, so we always, what we always do, we always take the, the stuff that we get from corporate and try to adapt it to our plans for our objectives and see how we can fit these into our plans um, so that they are, you know, more relevant for the AR objectives and our strategies. Um, and, and so does that mean that the planning processes need to be quite quite well aligned? I mean, I, I, I really think that most organizations have social media plans, which are which are not necessarily very um, strategic. You know, often there might be particular communications initiatives, and then there are long term goals in, in terms of the keywords that you might, might want. But often it's about often it's linked to metrics, very simple metrics about how many, you know, about, about the kind of traffic and conversational volume you want to generate and the number of followers and the number of conversations that you want to be in. So, I mean, are the, are the planning processes, are the paradigms, are the kinds of goals similar or are you able to find some common vocabulary to help you to, to link those together? Um, so what I say for us at Mand or in the AR team, we use the corporate or, or everything that comes from corporate, we use it as a guideline. We don't have to, um, not yet, um, I say, um, kind of um, provide the same or, or use the same measurements that corporate has to do. Um, so we, we take what we, what we receive, you know, in terms of, um, you know, is it training, is it any kind of materials? And then we identify, is that relevant to our audience? Is it relevant to our objectives, to the AR objectives? And then we go with that. Um, at the moment, we don't have to, that there's no, Kind of big social media um, plan for the whole company. Every team is it AR, is it PR, is it you know different marketing teams in different regions. They are able to take what comes from corporate and adapt it to their um, specific needs. So what, one one question that that I would be interested in, in, in thinking about is, and you're in the situation where I mean, you're in you're in quite a large organisation and also an, an American headquartered organisation. So you would expect that you would be, as an organization, as well developed as you are in your social media strategy. But maybe that's not the case for other organizations. And I, I wonder how you think other organizations that maybe didn't have such a, such a mature experience elsewhere in their organization with social media, how you think that they could move forward. Just before you answer that, I should just say, people who've logged on using the GoToMeeting client, if you've got questions that you want to um, throw in, uh, then feel free to type questions in to the to the chat bar, and you know Patricia and I will will will, will work our way through questions that get uh, get typed in. Yeah, but Patricia, your your thoughts on that last question? Um, so I'd be you know it'd be interesting to hear from other people too. Um, it's just what I think that there's a lot of 
you can get a lot of help. And I'm particularly thinking about, for example, um, the work that Kevin Lucas and Forrest are doing around AR and social media. Um, you know, a lot of guidelines later of how to build this strategy, um, how to work through different departments, um, how to, you know, get support from elsewhere. Um, but it would definitely be interesting to hear from other people, you know, some of the challenges that they face as well. So um, we can open up for a small discussion. I'm, I'm working you really, really hard on this. And I, I should say, for people who've, who've come into the call since the, since the beginning, uh, we're, we're unexpectedly in the situation where, um, where we, had to, we had to change the dial-in details for the call because we were over, over our limit. We had too many registrations for the call. And, and I think that may be, may be the reason why, why Barbara has, has not been able successfully to, to come into the call. We, we emailed her, but of course it's early in the morning. She may not have checked her, her emails uh, over there. We're going through some of the questions which were posted in the Analyst Relations Forum group on LinkedIn. And then at the end of that, we're going to open up uh, for people to, to contribute questions uh, or maybe even to make comments, depending on how time goes. If you have logged on using the GoToMeeting uh, software rather than coming in on a telephone, then feel free to type your questions into the into the chat, and you know we can throw those into the into the discussion. Um, Patricia, I just think, think Barbara think... made it. Sorry, Duncan, to interrupt. I think Barbara yeah. made it. Barbara, can you hear us? Yes. I can't. I can't hear her. Can you hear her? No. I think she would. I think she would pop up on the on the list. I'm sure Tom is reaching out to her now to try to make sure that she's that she's got the got the details. Well, we'll. It will be wonderful if she joins us, but we'll be we'll be fine if uh, if she can't. Um. So just thinking about more specific you know executional um, issues i think one one of the things that i alluded to earlier on was was this balance between having you know particular interactions one-to-one -one interactions with individual analysts which obviously can be you know really essential for building up rapport you know analysts feel so much you know warmer and you know fuzzier and more valued if if you get the, if, if they get the, the sense that ar people are, are really following what they are saying, not just through interacting, but also, you know, interacting immediately in real time, but also by showing, you know, the the knowledge that, you know, you know, by, by remembering what's happened in the past. How how to balance that up against long term initiatives? Do you think that might vary in some way according to the challenges that the AR program is facing or the maturity of the AR program, or do you think it's really the preferences of the AR leaders themselves? That should determine how how teams are balancing up those two, those you know those two paradigms. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm um can answer this. And, you know, we need some some more deep smarter people as well. But um, I think it depends on the AR person, and then also of course on on the analyst as well. So um, I mean, AR people changing their roles, but analysts changing their roles as well. So um, in terms of belonging. But, and it also probably depends on you know what it is you you're um you, you're talking about what kind of um campaign event um is it you're trying to engage the, the analyst in um so yeah that, that will depend on the air person as well as the analyst and have you ever have you ever been in the situation where maybe an analyst felt you know that that, that maybe social media wasn't being used appropriately, or have you come across that? I mean, I see that we have this question here about what are appropriate users of social media when interacting, but I, I also wonder whether there might be analysts who might feel, you know, that they're being followed too closely, or, you know, the, 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 that maybe, you know, that the streams that are about their research are fine to, to comment on, but then when they talk about, you know, the band that they went to see at the weekend, you know, maybe they might not feel comfortable AR people interacting with them on that more personal terrain. You have the eye. You have you. If you had any experiences of analysts being being worried about that, or or are people who are sharing socially just very happy with things being being commented on socially as well? 
Yes, I think so. Um, I mean, I haven't had any, you know, bad experience with that, but I think this is at least, you know, that's what people seem to be. They seem to be aware of, um, you know, if I if I decide to go on Twitter, if I decide to go on blog, I need to be aware of the fact that, you know, it's open to everybody. Everybody can see it. Everybody's free to comment on it. I mean, there are um, things like a linking voice, for example, when you um, can put, um, can restrict, um, like people who can comment on, people who can join the group, small things you can do, um, kind of to, to put some, some policies and regulations in place. But I think most of the people on Twitter they are aware that social media is open to everybody. So, um, but yeah, it's probably also I, I haven't had a, a bad experience. Yeah. So. And so balancing um, the kind of long-term projects against the kind of short-term relationship building. Are there, are there any particular things to things to remember there? I'm thinking, you know, it's quite easy to, to run the daily relationship, but then, you know, having having a longer time perspective on things, does this simply come from the plan or is, is there something else that, that, that people need to be considering? I think it's probably um, down to, you know, you, you need to figure out in terms of long-term interactions is the, the channel you're using, is that something the analyst is interested to use as, you know, for for, um, for for interactions in the future? Is that something, you know, for example, are you asking in a, in a forum, is, are you starting discussion about particular, a particular event or, asking, or are you asking some questions about, you know, want people to engage in some discussions on, you know, long-term campaigns. Um, but um, I, I say it depends. It's, it's always, for always social media, you can't, it's, it's always, you know, you have to figure out what is the appropriate way for the analyst you want to engage with. Um, you know, does he want to just quickly do some, you know, direct messages on Twitter, for example, or does he want to have, um, does he want to build the, the relationship, long-term relationship on or through any kind of social media channels? Hey, Patricia, can you hear me now? Barbara, is that you? Oh my goodness, you can. <laughs> yeah, I can. I can hear you. No, but now I can't hear Duncan anymore. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm worried about that actually. No, no, no. I was, I was just muted. Barbara, welcome, okay. welcome to the call. Oh. <laughs> there we go. So, um, so Barbara, I uh, I've got the the questions that were listed in the group uh, in the in the analyst relations forum group on LinkedIn in some slides, and I, I I think you're I think you've come in through the web client, haven't you? So you might even be able to see those on your on your screen uh, at the moment. I do. And I um, what I've been doing is kind of stepping through some of these questions um, with uh, with. Uh, with Patricia, um, and I, I wonder if there are any kind of, I mean, maybe the, you would just like to kind of get settled in the call a little bit, because I, I imagine you may have had a frustrating frustrating time trying to get in. But uh, but on the other hand, it may be that you've got some kind of opening thoughts about, about social AR that you want to kind of throw into the conversation straight away. I, well, I missed a bit. Try, uh, I was in and out of audio. I don't. I don't know where you are in the conversation. I have to admit. Um, I think it, it might be helpful just to give a little background on on what's happened here at Juniper. I, as a few people on the call may know, I've been a strong advocate of using social media for both the analysts to use it as well as for AR people to use it. You know, since it really came onto the scene. Um, oddly enough, I came to Juniper and discovered that I didn't have literally enough time in the day to do social. Um, I also lost my social voice, so I, I had changed from being focused on talking about influencer relations and analyst relations and, and the whole spectrum of industry research, you know, kind of down to talking about um, service provider and enterprise networking. 
so I lost my social voice. I, I once heard Charlene uh, Lee talk about that, uh, that she she, she it made the, the equivalent of losing your social voice to uh, having a writer's block, for example. Um, so, so I found that I, I, I stumbled personally, but then professionally I also found that there were just huge barriers to implementing a social program at Juniper. Um, I think the biggest one was that it, there wasn't a, a robust social program in place here. There were individual people who uh, did some great work on social. Uh, Abner Germanaugh would be one of them. A lot of you may remember him from IDC. He's been a uh, vendor side with Juniper for quite a while. Um, but there wasn't really an organized organized uh, corporate communications plan. If you wrote a blog, it, it had to go to legal review. If you wrote a, twit, a tweet, it actually should have gone to legal review. So, th so there were some real barriers there. Um, as that sort of got you know, settled out, I realized that we just had too much work to do to integrate new processes and new training for the team. They just, they were already at full tilt, if you will. So, uh, so the question was, you know, is there something that we can do less of, um, or is there, or is there some small way that we can add uh, social to the program? Um, again, you know, we did, we started following people on Twitter and, and certainly making sure we're connected with people on Facebook and LinkedIn, but we weren't doing any kind of aggressive or consistent monitoring. So I think uh, some of Patricia's earlier comments about needing to have the right tools in place are, are you know, really spot on. Um, where we finally, you know, kind of started picking up steam is when I was able to bring in a person who specifically had skill sets and experience in doing social media and she had done some for both PR as well as AR and she's actually taken the program um, and you know launched it using multiple uh, channels. We're doing a newsletter which is also you know based in a blog so it's a blog but we're also pushing it out as a newsletter. Um, we're, we're monitoring people consistently on Twitter now. We're beginning to and you know, join conversations. I wouldn't say we're starting conversations, but we're certainly joining them. And we're learning a lot about the analysts just by watching them on social media. I think we've learned a lot about who's influencing whom, um, and who's actually friends with whom, and um, you know what they're learning and how they're reacting to industry events as well as some competitor events. So, so it's been quite a journey over over three years. It's taken a long time to ramp this up and. Um, I've certainly had, uh, you know, a great deal of experience with with the downside of trying to get it started. I can't tell you how excited we are uh, to to finally have it going, and we're seeing some pretty good uh, traction with with our key analysts, which is which is very gratifying. Barbara, I think it's really interesting to think that this that this journey's taken you three years because so many people who might be trying to get more resources for AR will want to be able to go back to their managers and say, oh, don't worry, it's not going to take three years or anything. You know, you're going to see positive results straight at, straight away. Do, do you have any, any, any guidance for people who, who want to be able to identify, you know, what are the, what are the important milestones or what are the low hanging fruit that they might want to identify when they're trying to explain to their, to their colleagues what the benefits can be of, of developing a more serious program? Uh, definitely, I, it, just because I I went through this every year for three years and finally hit the the winning combination uh, this year. So um, the first thing you need to do is actually explain how you're using your time. So I did a tracking of relative portions of of the week work of the work week, excuse me, spent on doing social versus doing um, market intelligence inquiries for a research desk as well as an AR desk, doing out you know push. AR outbound AR as well as doing uh, full inquiry support. Um, so, so when we looked at the amount of time we were spending, uh, the first thing that came up, which everyone does, is that we're spending way too much time in internal meetings. Um, the second thing that came up is there, there actually weren't enough hours in the day with the existing staff um, and the existing workload and the existing corporate priorities to be able. To, you could just see the math. We could we couldn't get there from here. Something had to go away. And none of our stakeholders wanted any of the work we were doing to go away. And you know they're human beings, and they didn't they didn't want us to work between midnight and 2 a.m. either. Um, so, so that was a good thing. Um, so I documented I documented the amount of work that you know the, the the fact that we didn't have enough man hours to cover additional work. The second thing that I identified was how some of our competitors were using social media, and and examples of the conversations where we were not engaged. 
And then the third thing that I did was correlate the AR program to the rest of corporate communications and, and showing that there was a growing gap between the best practices in place in analyst relations and the best practices in place in product marketing and uh, PR. And those three things actually helped. That, that helped justify getting the uh, headcount that I needed uh, to come in. The other way that I was able to justify this was pretty much on a, on a cost return basis because I was able to show by bringing in um, a, a more junior level position, someone, you know, some, someone in a, not in a senior manager level, but in a specialist level, um, that not only could that person completely, completely drive the social program, but also could offload a lot of um, the more tactical work from the senior staff, plus pick up a practice area uh, of her own. So, so when you put that whole package together from you know, the, the staffing point of view, from the um, consistency and integration across corporate communications, and then you know, from the human factor of you know, quality of life, quality of work, and, and aligning with corporate values, um, we were definitely able to justify it. I got the head count. And from the time that this person started, she started in September, and we started seeing results within 60 days. So. Wow, that's really that's really inspiring, and I think also the the idea that you can bring in focus focus resource, I think that's really appealing, um, and it's also interesting that that you know that, that that you've been able to do this in an organization which you know maybe hasn't, uh, as you said, which maybe hasn't had a really substantial investment in social media at the at the corporate level. And did, did did it look for a while as if as if AR was was somehow more able to 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 accelerate its its social media work than than the, than than the kind of core marketing communications function in the group or or did this happen at the same time as the rest of the organization also developing uh, more more social media profiles we lagged behind uh, we certainly lagged behind uh, the rest of corporate communications programs in terms of actually implementation across the company, I'd say um, we've caught up very quickly. Um, so, so, so we are in step now, proving that you know, bringing in, you know, somebody who's already got the skill set, the the inclinations, the instincts, understands the kind of language to use. Um, you know, just made all the difference. Plus, you know, she had no ramp up time on social media. That made a big difference because the rest of my team definitely has a ramp up time and we're still in that you know ramp up time I, I say the other thing that I found is um, you know unless you have people who have already been using social media extensively um, it's going to take it's going to take a good six to twelve months to ramp up uh, someone in analyst relations you know who definitely knows their job does their job really well but needs to add these skill sets it, it just takes a long time to get the um, you know the the muscle memory in place, if you will. Well, we've we've had a question in on the on the on the chat, which which I'll put to um, uh, to both of you, but which is you know how should one handle the scenario where in-house public relations overreact to negative comments by analysts on social media? So imagine the situation where you know you've got colleagues in marketing communications maybe even holding the purse strings for for analyst relations and in the way where you know in traditional analyst relations pe people walk in with some piece of research from some no-name analyst that nobody cares about saying why aren't you paying more attention to you know fred and des moines when he's the least important person in the world what what, what happens when 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 you see public relations colleagues maybe escalating or overreacting when they see negative comment by analysts, uh, I mean, this may not be a scenario that either of you have come across, but but maybe from a kind of theoretical project, uh, you know, from a theoretical viewpoint, it might be interesting to think about how, how you imagine people should react to a problem like that. Uh, Patricia, do you want to have a have the first go at that, perhaps? I think I'm, well, first of all, I haven't luckily <laughs> I haven't experienced um, anything like this. Um, what I know that for us is, is very important is just, um, you know, working very closely together. So we, you know, and also using some tools to help you um, kind of being able to um, to see some of these things, you know, very quickly and then the close collaboration between PR, marketing and, and AR and then the social media team um, under, obviously under marketing for us as well. 
um, the help, you know, reacting to these kind of things very, very quickly and, um, you know, um, kind of find a solution together how, how we can react, react to these things. Barbara? Yeah, you know, we, um, I've had an interesting situation here where partly because we were, you know, lagging behind the implementation of social media tools, um, we found ourselves in a debate with the social media team over which analysts should be on the top 25 influencer list for the company. And, you know, you would think that would be a good problem to have, and it is, because it brings, you know, all press is good press, and it brings uh, focus on the fact that analysts, at least some analysts, are um, influencing lots of audiences on, on social media. Um, where we ran into trouble was this. Um, the social media tools are picking up, obviously, on kind of quantities, right, around keywords, you know, number of number of posts, number of mentions, number of retweets, they correlate that, they, kind of like with cloud, they correlate that with, uh, you know, the person's network and, and decide based on that they have an algorithm where therefore this person's in the top X number of influencers. That's all well and good and, until you have um, analysts who are using social media as their primary marketing channel. And so, you know, the, the, it's not that they're trying to game their social media numbers per se, I'm not suggesting that, but, but rather they show up in these tools as being much more influential than perhaps they are with the decision makers we'd be targeting. Um, so not to say they don't have lots of followers, but, but rather to say, you know, do those followers matter to us as a company? And um, it was interesting to need to go toe-to-toe -to -toe because, of course, you know, who on this call doesn't know in their gut whether someone should be on that top 25 list or not? Sure, we want to see the data and we want to have an open mind. Um, but at the same time, you know, once we look at the data and, and then we go back and look at the person's activities, um, you know, w there's not really any kind of quantitative data that we can still come up with to, to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the tool and say, take the person off the list. And, and at that point, it becomes a, an issue of, you know, who has authority. Um, so, so we finally negotiated, a, a, you know, the, the point where if if I say no, the person doesn't belong on the top 25 list. I don't want you to do all the activities around that person, you know, that you'll do for the other 24. Um, that's okay. Um, by the same token, um, they still keep that analyst uh, on their monitoring dashboard so that they can see if, in particular, if that person is is becoming very negative, um, and they'll let me know that. Uh, but they have stood down from, for example, promoting that person's twi tweets or, or blog posts um, or forum activities, um, along with people who you know we do really care about at that at that level. So it's been tough. Um, I, I I think it's it was interesting to have my own expertise on analysts questioned uh, because of a you know the results of a tool uh, and and people who actually hadn't read the conversations didn't know the influencers. Um, the other influencers, and certainly didn't know this person's uh, kind of MO, if you will. So, so I, I ran into that. I'd, I'd be interested if other people are running into it as well. I, I would certainly expect so. I, I, I can't believe it's a completely rare case. And, and I think, in a way, you know, the use of social media tools is one of those those kind of foundational questions. You know, you know, are uh, especially if, if, if people are using tools which are not simply monitoring tools, but are actually, you know, CRM type, you know, interaction management tools through, through which people are, are queuing up their content and are, are scanning for, uh, for social media activity to, to track or even to respond to, yeah? It can be, you know, I, I think it's very difficult in, in the scenario that you're talking about if people are using um, social media tiering that, that isn't based in the, in the offline world. You know, for exactly the reason that, that you explained, that, that what happens online can be, you know, completely independent of what happens in the, in the, in the, in the physical world, which is our primary concern. You know, whereas perhaps for, for, for most social media teams, what happens in the physical world is not the primary concern. Um, yeah, yeah. D definitely, and and I think it, it also uncovered for me, um, you know, the, the the lack of understanding of the analyst and the lack of understanding of how to dig into um, their profiles in in the in the real world, 
So if you think about it, you can think, you know, some of the other people who would be in the top 25 list would be some very high profile journalists and bloggers, uh, certainly some customers, some end users, some academics, uh, and some executives, of uh, government officials. These people, are, it's much easier to track their profiles. It's much easier to explore them, to, to pull it apart, to do those kinds of really colorful influencer maps with all the spokes and wheels that, you know, that we, that we see. Um, those people are pretty easy to uncover. When you get into really wanting to understand who analysts are influencing, you start talking about who their clients are, and that's not so visible online. And it's, it's very tough to explain uh, why analysts are different than everybody else, and you can't just take it at face value the way that you can, for example, with a journalist. So. Patricia, have you come across something like, like that? Any any kind of pushing or pulling about who who the priority analysts actually are? Absolutely, and I totally agree with you know what Barbara says, especially when you um, you know talk to um, like marketing. You know they after me, they after they're looking at numbers. They're looking at you know how many followers does this and this person have. We do use um, for some of these things. We look at t t two ways as well. You know, on the one hand, you look at Radiant Six, for example, that's you know tool that we use in terms of monitoring, um, you know, social media monitoring. Look at okay, what does you know Radiant Six say, say? Who are the top 25 analysts um, according to number of interactions, number of followers, blah blah blah. But then we look at you know the other hand, okay, who do we work with and who is actually even you know they may not even be on social media, but it's more important than the ones or the you know some of the people in the list that Radiant Six came across. So. Um, um, yes, you do need, you, you can't rely, it, it, it's a tool, it's not, you know, it's not a human being um, behind this tool. Um, so um, you always have to look at, you know, both sides of the, of the coin. And I, th I think that that is quite a, quite a, quite a key question, actually, isn't it? I mean, the, the whole, the whole process for which you are um, actually identifying who, who your targets are. Are there, are there other kind of foundation issues that you think people should particularly be concerned about? I mean, that there are, there are some questions here on, here on the screen, but there might be other, other questions that you think people should be really focusing on when they're trying to get the foundations right for their program. Um, for one of the areas we're just exploring right now is where to draw the line. So, um, you know, some of us are actually friends with, I mean, socially, you know, friends with some of the, our, our top analysts and our, and our not-so-top analysts. Um, so we're connected with them on Facebook in particular. Now, now, you know, Juniper uses Facebook, and that's a, that's a key channel for us. It, it's a key engagement platform. But for the AR team, it, it's always been, because we haven't been active in social media for AR, you know, it's really been more of a personal uh, network. It's you know we, we tend to we tend to be very personal there. We have photos of family and friends and that sort of thing. So the question is, you know, should we draw the line there? Should we just say, well, we're not going to do AR on Facebook, regardless of the fact of you know, whether or not analysts are active there, whether Juniper is active there? And um, you know, Patricia, I, I'd, I'd love to hear how you're you're dealing with that. But uh, I, I do feel like I should be able to give my team the option to have part of their social presence be, remain personal. You know? Absolutely, I would totally agree. And then, um, so for example, we did about three years ago when we, you know, started thinking about, you know, AI on social, we surveyed some of the analysts and we asked them, you know, it's quite straightforward. So what are the channels you use and what are the channels that you would use, um, you know, to, to talk, you know, to engage with us? And they, you know, I can't, you know, have a particular numbers in mind, but really the majority said Facebook is personal for us. So, um, you know, we'll be happy to be friends with some of the AR managers on your team on Facebook, but we will not talk business on Facebook. So for us, it was quite clear, quite clear after the survey, and we do survey, you know, well, not survey, but, you know, ask the analysts and try and has this opinion changed? Um, but that's done, you know, semantic users, semantic the corporate, you know, teams, they do use Facebook, you know, absolutely with, with our customers and some of the analysts, they do follow um, the corporate channels on Facebook as well. Um, but for the AR team, we quite, you know, we decided um, not yet. This might change as well because obviously, you know, analyst opinion may change, behaviors change as well. Um, 
but yeah, again, the analyst told us no, that that's personal. So um, we'll be friends with you, but let's not talk business on Facebook. Can I ask about metrics? And I mean, I, I, I don't know if people are, are kind of pulling um, any information about AR into kind of wider reporting tools or balanced scorecards uh, at the, uh, you know, for AR as a whole. But, but even in, in a very granular way, you know, do, have, have I, do either of you have favorite tools or favorite measurements that you find to be most effective? Um, we've, we've standardized on um, Radium 6, so you know we've been you know we're, we've been using that for a while um, at the corporate level. Um, I'd say the you know we we still will flip over when we're you know traveling or or just uh, mixing personal and business. We'll we'll flip over to tools like Hootsuite. Um, so we, we use a mix of tools in terms of reporting out. Uh, we combine uh, in a very intentional way. We combine the AR social results with the rest of the social results so that the company can see one, one, one report. Um, we also then double report that. We'll, we'll send out a separate summary of AR impact uh, around a program or an event and we repeat that information there as well. So um, we found that, you know, that seems like a natural outgrowth from pulling analyst quotes out of press stories and, and measuring tonality there, um, it seemed like a pretty natural thing to do. So so if someone wants to just see the, the social you know, results for the company, they could look at that one report. If they wanted to see the AR results, they can look at one of our other reports. And that seems to be working pretty well for the time. Patricia? Yeah, we use a similar kind of, um, yeah, of measurement system as well. And what we also do is um, we look at different campaigns that we were running on our social media channels. So, for example, we have a blog as well. So we would look um, at, you know, how many people look at the blog and then based on one of these blogs, were there any other discussions and any other forums arise? Um, you know, in terms of if you have different events, we do, you know, run social media activities um, on the events as well and track um, some of these activities as well. But then again, we use Radiant Six as well, like, um, like Barbara or Barbara's team. Um, we're, we're approaching the end of our hour. Um, obviously, for, for people who are, who are online, please please do continue to, to type in type in questions. There's one question that's come in. <coughs> tools such as Radian 6 are paid for. Are there any tools out there which are free that are, that are accurate? I, I would imagine that, that, that question probably answers itself, doesn't it, really? But I wonder if anyone has any experience of, of other tools. Um, no, I'm always interested to see them, though. Um, but, but no, I haven't found any that are, you know, accurate. There, it's okay for tracking hashtags. I mean, there's a million tools for tracking hashtags. Um, I, I'd love to find a much a, a good tool that just lets you delve more into LinkedIn. But obviously, there's some privacy issues there. So, I mean, just I'd be, on. I'd be interested if if people can if people could. To type in to chat those who those who have it if they can type in what tools they're using I'd, I'd be interested to know just one just one thought on radian 6 I mean it is um, it's been a while since I've used it but, but but up until six months I was using radian 6 quite intensively and one of the things that, that is possible with radian 6 is to set up a profile and track it for 30 days before you really have to pay for it and so if you're in the situation where you're doing you know, some quarterly reporting or if you're like speculatively looking at who, who might be the most influential uh, people in a particular area. And if you've, got, if you've got the time to be able to do that, then Radiant 6 is actually a really, a really powerful uh, tool there. I'm gonna I'm gonna see if if we can draw things uh, draw things together um, a little bit. Um, Patricia, Barbara, do either of you have any kind of closing thoughts? Is there anything that we should have spoken about that we didn't speak about, or is there anything is there anything kind of on your mind now that you've had this experience of talking over these issues? I think I think one of the main things. Um, it's really when you when you start doing your you know going on socialist really start with the listening you know there's no need to 
say like, okay, it seems to be everybody's using Twitter. Let's just, you know, create a Twitter handle and let's, you know, send out some tweets on on, on this channel. Um, I think you really start with, you know, looking who are the analysts you're tracking, what kind of tools they're using, what what are they talking about, who are they talking to, um, you know, who are they engaging with, um, and then start before you start kind of being being active and start, you know, creating channels, creating any kind of campaign. Listen first. I think that's one of the, at least for us, um, it was a very, you know, important, important element of the whole AR social media program. And I think for us, um, you know, when, once we are really comfortable in the saddle, if, if you will, on, on these basics that we're doing now, um, I, I'm really looking forward to being able to understand how analysts are using tools like, or platforms like Tumblr and Reddit. Um, I think I think there's uh, a lot to, to look at there. There's some new syndication sites and, and, and philosophies and tools in place around content, around premium content. And I think that uh, that's, that's another area that will be great to focus on. Um, but right now, you know, with Twitter, blogs, and videos online, I think we pretty much have our hands full right now. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to draw the webinar uh, to a close now. I think the recording is going to turn out okay, and that's going to be up on my uh, YouTube channel later on this evening, if the recording works out okay. If you liked this webinar and, uh, and you want more, then please join the Analyst Relations Forum on, on LinkedIn or subscribe to my newsletter at influencerrelations.com. Either way, you'll get invites to, uh, to future webinars. If you've got suggestions about topics for webinars or if you'd like to talk on one, then, then let us know. Um, just finally, I'd like to thank uh, Patricia and Barbara. Thank you so much uh, for, uh, for coming along and joining us today. It's been an incredibly valuable and powerful conversation, you know, not f for me and I'm sure for others on, on the call uh, as well. Barbara, apologies for any frustrations that you had in, in joining the call, but it was really well worth it uh, for your uh, for your insight and uh, for joining the conversation today. So thank you both uh, and uh, look forward to speaking to you soon. It was a pleasure. Look forward to connecting with everyone. Great. Thank you. Thanks for joining.